So, today we are looking at a different style of computing called as bio computing. Uh, it is not very popular to uh, type of computing, but I am sure as time passes people will appreciate the power of bio computing. Uh, so, let us look at what bio computing is all about. So, it is basically using DNA sequences which is essentially using ATCG uh, and somehow encoding information in those ATCGs, we will see soon how and um, being able to create a fluid or some kind of a liquid uh, in which the DNA sequences uh, will be there and then using the tremendous parallelism which is available because just one drop of uh, a liquid uh, or substance may contain trillions of DNA molecules and somehow if I can use DNA to do computation, I have massive uh, parallelism and uh, that is actually the uh, secret behind uh, using biocomputing. Uh, maybe today it sounds more like science fiction to talk about biocomputing, but over time uh, I think this will emerge as one of the frontier areas of uh, computing. So, it evolves, uh, it is used to solve computational problems, uh, it involves um, leveraging the properties of DNA molecules for computation and let us look at an overview of how this goes about. So, uh, it is used for data encoding uh, because there are 4 nucleotide uh, databases. So, you have the ATCG, so you can take a binary sequence and encode uh, a pair of digits as A a pair of binary digits as uh, T or C or G, we will see examples of that. Uh, we all know that DNA consists of um, these uh, uh, double helices uh, in which um, uh, we have these uh, DNA uh, wrapped around and uh, uh, around the histosome, uh, histones and basically we have the ATCG as uh, the basic nucleotide which we can ut utilize for computation, we will see how. So, moving forward, uh, there is I do not have to say that there is scope for huge amount of parallelism because if you see in GPU or even in a uh, distributed system, what were what is it that we were uh, using? We were using in a distributed system a whole bunch of separate systems and distributing the task in a GPU we had thousands of cores and we were doing one particular thread on each task uh, on each particular core and uh, we were seeking parallelism. Now, uh, it is very ironical that nature provides us a huge amount of parallelism uh, by means of the DNA molecule. There are trillions of molecule, uh, trillions of DNA strands in a small uh, piece of um, uh, you know substance. So, uh, it is an uh, very uh, you know uh, intriguing part of computer science if we could use those DNA molecules to encode information and do it. Now, there are some very interesting problems which have been solved uh, using DNA uh, sequencing uh, which is one of them is Hamiltonian path. Now, those of you have done uh, design and analysis of algorithm, you would have seen a close cousin of the traveling salesman problem. Uh, of detecting in a given uh, graph, how to detect a Hamiltonian graph uh, which is Hamiltonian cycle, which is one complete cycle where every node or every vertice of the grass, uh, graph is uh, visited at least once and it comes back. So, that is called the Hamiltonian cycle. Now, if you take the Hamiltonian cycle as an example, uh, I will just uh, give you a bit of insight how it can be done with uh, a DNA uh, molecule or using DNA sequencing. Uh, we can uh, quickly uh, look at it, but um, you know the basic steps which are involved in DNA before I tell you how it is, how Hamiltonian cycle is going to be solved is that uh, you know you could produce uh, DNA strands of your own liking which are called custom DNA strands. Today tools are available to create custom DNA strands in the lab. So, you could create them and then uh, these strands are mixed in a test tube allowing them to react and hybridize uh, in the steps that they are like moving from one state to another they can represent computational step. Then there is something called uh, the polymerase chain reaction which will 
amplify certain DNA molecules only because a test tube may contain lot of DNA molecules, but the DNA molecule that we want, we can choose to amplify that using the polymerase chain reaction. Uh, I will touch upon that in a moment and then the resulting DNA strands could be then analyzed and then selection process can be applied on it and the computational results can be adapted. Uh, okay. So, going forward, let me just show you how this would work for a Hamiltonian cycle. The DNA uh, uh, Hamiltonian cycle, so imagine that I have, uh, uh, I have a graph, so these are my vertices. So, let us imagine a graph and I have to check whether it forms a Hamiltonian cycle or not. So, how would I do that? Let us call this A, let us call this B, let us call this C, let us call this D, let us call this E. Now, how would I represent A? As a sequence of A, T, C, G. Uh, so, let me just draw a, a, a as a as a pattern. Let us say A, I use a DNA sequence to represent A, which is G, C, uh, A and T. Okay. This is the DNA sequence I use to represent this. And uh, then I, I use, uh, so, so if you see this is having G, C at the beginning and A, T at the end. Now, uh, if I have to capture the information that uh, uh, A and B are connected, how would I create the DNA sequence for B? I mean, uh, what I would do is, uh, uh, because they are connected, so uh, A, T's end should pair with that. You know, A pairs with T and T pairs with A. So, I could have something like C, C, uh, T, A. I could have C, C, T, A, uh, which is, uh, sorry, uh, I think I will have to correct this a bit. Uh, let me erase this part, come back and choose this. Uh, not really. Uh, it should begin with that. So, it should be T A uh, and then this could be let us make it G G. Okay. So, what would happen is uh, if you see this, uh, this is complemented by this and this is complemented by this. Always A will pair with T and uh, G will pair with C. This is how the four nucleotides interact. So, if I have to see that they A and B, this is B, form an edge, how would I uh, do that? Uh, I would say that the beginning of and it is a directed edge, uh, A T would be uh, T A and, and that is how they would be. Even if it is not a directed edge, it would still represent a, 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 a DNA sequence. So, we have this as the DNA sequence for A, we have B as a DNA sequence because there is an edge from A to B. Now, what could this be? Okay. C, C, uh, B ends in G, G and that edge goes to this. So, this would be C, C to start with and let us say A, T. I mean, I am just making it up. So, C, C to start with and uh, uh, now, you understand that B and C can be connected because G will pair with C and this G will also pair with C, thus creating an edge uh, B C. Uh, now, similarly, this would be A T. So, the bottom side would be T A and uh, I guess this would be uh, something like, uh, let us put C and uh, uh, G. Okay. Let us put C and G. So, by the same token, uh, this is T A. So, it will pair with A T, T A. So, what would this be? It is ending in C G. So, this would be G C 
and uh, uh, maybe it could be anything else uh, C T ok, I am just making it up. So, as long as this part pairs with this part uh, and this part over here pairs with this part we are fine. Uh, so, uh, if I have G C C T uh, what could this be? Uh, now, this is A T. Now, uh, obviously, if this has to pair with that and it has to be an edge uh, like this, uh, it has to end uh, if there is an edge in this direction, either the end of A T should pair with the beginning of this or the end of C T should pair with this. So, uh, this we have already paired or the end of or the beginning of this should pair with with the end of this ok something like that you know you, you could figure this out I have just given arbitrary sequences, but um, uh, you have to give them uh, more correctly and uh, if I I guess make it C G probably it will work and this is how the uh, edges will be connected. So, if you put if you create the nodes with these uh, with these DNA sequences and allow them uh, uh, using polymerase chain reaction to multiply in a piece of fluid what will happen is the edges will align these DNA sequences. So, this will align with this, this will align with this, this will align with it, this will align with it, this may or may not align depending on the configuration but if it aligns you have a Hamiltonian cycle. So, uh, uh, and then if all those align and form a single DNA strand I mean all of these form and become a bigger DNA segment then we could use uh, polymerase chain reaction to detect this and pick it up and if that is forming then we know a Hamiltonian cycle is forming. So, uh, if you will in a kind of a, a slightly roundabout way what are we doing? We are converting a graph problem into a DNA <laughs> sequencing problem. We are converting the uh, ending point uh, or an edge into some kind of combination of A T and C G we are able to define that. Now, that is the essence of biocomputing. So, this kind of thing if you are able to do and define a graph then we can take this idea forward and, and do lot of graph problems based on this. Obviously, I have just told you the gist of how to do a graph problem uh, using uh, biocomputing. There is obviously a lot more to it uh, and let us move on and see what all can we do. So, what are the advantages of this kind of an approach? Uh, there is scope for extremely high parallelization and potential for miniaturization because a small molecule uh, is going to have a small drop of water is going to have millions of molecules not millions trillions of DNA strands. So, you can imagine the amount of power it has there is hardly any energy consumption it is a chemical process a biological process hardly any uh, uh, energy consumption. Uh, there are obviously errors because the polymerase chase reaction may not happen the way it is supposed to happen. There might be difficulties in scaling up to real world problems. Uh, these are currently very cumbersome because the even the act of DNA manipulation or DNA sequencing even that takes some effort. So, we need to be clear how to be able to do that. This is all a you know nascent technology it is not a well established technology obviously otherwise I would not have to talk about it in so much detail. So, there is another kind of problem which you can solve uh, this is a encoding problem. So, let us say you want to carry a, a secret from one place to another place you just want to convey uh, some kind of a secret from this place to that place. So, the secret is S which you have put in an uh, some binary representation E C R E T. So, that is the secret you have to uh, have and that is a binary code. 
So, from ASCII to binary that is what it has done that is straightforward. Now, you have decided to encode it as a DNA. So, we used A for 0 0, T for 0 1, G for 1 0 and C for 1 1. So, uh, we split this which is 1 2 3 4 each combination is represented by a nucleotide. So, this becomes something like that. So, uh, we have for secret we have T A G. Uh, so, let us see what happens uh, 0 1 is T again 0 1. So, it should be T T uh, this should be T T uh, 0 0 would be 0 0 would be A Okay, let us write it I think this is a mistake T T uh, uh, A 1 1 is C. So, this would be captured as T T A C S would become T T A C uh, E would become uh, uh, similarly 0 1 E would become uh, uh, 0 1 is T 0 0 is uh, A we have these two then 0 1 is uh, I guess 0 1 is again T again 0 1 is T. So, that is how it will go. So, I think these sequences are not correct these are the correct sequences because you are using A for 0 0 T for 0 1 G for 1 0 now you create. So, what are you doing every letter is becoming some kind of a DNA sequence and you are taking those letters and creating a final DNA sequence which is a co concatenation of all that. So, this is a DNA sequence. So, you produce this DNA sequence. Now, chances are if you produce this in a chemical I mean if you produce this DNA sequence and inject it into a fluid. <laughs> and or this DNA strand and inject it into a fluid and allow it to multiply and carry that fluid to the other person. Maybe the other person will not know that you are giving him some kind of a secret unless he knows how to decode it, unless he knows how to decrypt it. So, basically your secret is going as a bunch of fluid as a as some uh, water molecule that is how your uh, secret is going. So, imagine uh, you want to convey some secret message you you give him not nothing nothing else but a, a bunch of uh, vessel of uh, uh, fluid and ask him to be given to the other party and once you give that to the other party uh, you know and the other party takes it and analyzes it then he will come to know what is it that you want to convey right so if you work out a scheme to chemically decode it we will have the other side of it we will have secret coming back. So, going forward the key <laughs> a key in uh, DNA encryption. So, we could use this as the key and uh, uh, this is how the uh, various enzymes could be created based on our letters uh, or messages. So, we are sending English through fluid you know this is very strong and very interesting and intriguing because uh, data in a way is becoming DNA strands and DNA strands are becoming fluid. So, you are carrying data as water or, or as liquid and the data is going as liquid and uh, flowing through something and can be done multiple selection patterns can be created many interesting things can be done. So, if you if you will you, uh, the, those of you who are smart will start understanding that we are talking of a completely different world a completely different paradigm and that is what is biocomputing. It is very nascent it needs to be exploited it needs to be taken to a next world, but uh, if you can just understand what is the potential I think we have served our purpose.